Today we're going to be talking about Joel Guy Jr., his sentencing, and as well as that horrific letter that he wrote from his cell. Now remember, just recently Joel Guy Jr. was convicted of brutally ending his parents' lives over the 2016 Thanksgiving holiday. These were heinous crimes. We're actually coming up on the anniversary of them. And I mean, he even went so far as to boil his mother's head. The motivation appeared to be monetary, as it often is in these cases. Uh, it appears that Joel was a perpetual student, uh, wanting to possibly, maybe one day off in the future, probably not, thank God it didn't happen. Uh, he wanted to be a plastic surgeon. I mean, can you imagine. But his parents were basically like, uh, you've been in school forever and we're done with it. So you're going to have to support yourself. And this apparently did not go over well with them. Now, October 2nd, the jury found him guilty of a few different crimes, two counts of first degree murder, three counts of felony murder, and two counts of abuse of a corpse. So October 8th, just six days after that guilty verdict came in, Joe wrote a letter from his cell about his cellmate and it is more insight into the completely disturbed mind of Joel Guy Jr. Now the contents of the letter which I'm about to read, these weren't an apology, these weren't anything about remorse, these were about the things he was fantasizing about doing to his cellmate. Joel writes, this was a bad idea. I am psychologically unstable. I'm having fantasies of using my fingers to gouge this gentleman's eyes out of his head while he's unconscious and therefore wouldn't be able to defend himself. Given that in these fantasies it is essential that I use my fingers, a no sharp restriction will accomplish nothing in determining these actualizations. I'm writing this letter because I don't want to end up with a disciplinary infraction, or worse, more criminal charges, nor do I logically believe that this gentleman deserves to be blind. I don't know what to do. I shouldn't be allowed to access another person while they're unconscious. This is a bad idea. Please stop me from acting on these fantasies. Thanks, Joel Guy Jr., 10-8-2020, a.m. Now, aside from being absolutely horrible in what he's talking about with this letter, I think he's trying to accomplish a few things. Overall, I think he's trying to just get in a cell by himself. I think that's what he wants. I think he wants protective custody. It is going to be a long road for this dude. I mean, not only did he take the lives of his parents, but this was heinous in the way that he did it. So he's not going to be that well you know, liked in, in prison. Now, also, I think it's interesting some of the things that he puts in the letter. First of all, when he's talking about the cellmate, you know, saying, oh, I'm imagining, you know, gouging his eyes out and da, da 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 And he's like, look, I don't want to get an infraction or criminal charges. It's interesting that's his first thing that he thinks of. What is, how is me doing that to him going to affect me? You know, like, people are going to be concerned, oh, well, yeah, we don't want you to get more of those either. You know, the first thing is, well, we don't want this guy to be harmed. You know, and that's his, like, afterthought. Well, I don't logically, and I think it's very interesting that he uses the word logically, I don't logically think he deserves to be blind. Really? You know, <laughs> well, that's real nice of you. So, again, I think it's interesting that he uses the word logically because you can see that Joel is not crazy. He is not insane. He is just an evil person. Now, as you can imagine, this letter didn't help sentencing. Now, he is going to end up serving two life sentences to start with, one followed by the other, so they are consecutive. Now, he's also going to serve four additional years for the abuse of corpse charges. So, Joel is 32 right now, so these sentences all add up to over 100 years. So, he's never leaving that prison. Now, of course, his defense attorneys have to act on his behalf, and so they're trying to lessen the blow of this. They were hoping to get rid of those additional four years and not to have the sentences, you know, be consecutive. And they're like, look, he would be, you know, an old man by the time he would possibly get out if he had, does have a chance to, if we do these concurrent. And, you know, he's not going to be a threat to society. Well, the judge was like, uh, I'm not concerned about him being an old man physically. It's his mind. It's his thoughts. It's what makes him tick that I am concerned about. And he said, you know what? I don't care if Joel is 300 years old. He is still going to be an evil human being that will be a danger to others. And again, the judge brings up this letter. It's like, look, he's already thinking about harming his cellmate. 
Now the judge also even said, you know what, Joel, it looks like you were borderline having fun and enjoying getting to see, you know, what you did, the harm that you caused to your parents and your family during the trial. And a lot of people talked about that because he just seemed so mute of any kind of response. And if anything was there, it was like that little evil grin of look what I did. Now, like everybody, Joel does have the right to seek a new trial before he goes to appeal it and all this kind of legal stuff uh, that we see happen over and over again with these cases. You know, this is not over with, it will be wrapped up. I don't ever foresee him getting out of prison, but we are gonna see more of him. And now the first time we will is February 5th, and they're gonna address some of these options that he has you know, from here, which are slim to none that they will even happen. So we'll be on the lookout for that. I can almost assure you, we will be hearing something popping off with this dude from prison. So we will stay tuned. If you wanna watch more of my videos on this case or other ones, click those things popping up. I appreciate you watching, and I'll talk to you soon.